Hello and welcome to Johns Manville's installation demonstration video of our new single ply liquid flashing products. I have Jonas Houchin here with me today and he's going to be taking us through the steps necessary for successful installation of these products. So Jonas, why don't you start by telling us uh, about the penetration that we're going to be flashing today. Yeah, sure, absolutely. We've got a TPO roof system that's been installed here, Jim. We've got a piece of angle iron that's coming through. Uh, we've got our positive mechanical attachment around this penetration, so that's kind of all taken care of. So the, the reason we might use this product here is this is what we consider an irregular penetration. It's uh, irregularly shaped. Normal flashing methods don't allow you to get a good watertight seal. So that's where the single ply liquid flashing really comes in handy. All right, so the first step is surface preparation. You've done a fair amount of it already here. Why don't you kind of step us through the steps that you've already taken on this, this process? Yeah, absolutely. We've got, uh, like I said, we've got this angle iron that's coming through the roof, uh, taking an angle grinder and a, with a grinding wheel and ground it down to smooth bare metal just to make sure that we don't have any contaminants, no mill scale, anything like that. Uh, you do have to go with the, the grinding wheel on that. A wire brush isn't gonna be aggressive enough from that perspective. Uh, I've got our flashing height here is a minimum eight inch that we have in our specification. So I've come up to about eight and a half to give me room to have the reinforcement stop just shy of that so it gets encapsulated. And then I've taped off a nice, you know, even square here around the penetration, uh, giving myself plenty of room to make sure that my overlaps from my targets always have at least two inches of overlap. Okay, excellent. Um, looks like you've already done the, the preparation on the metal, so we're ready there. Uh, I know you need to do some sanding on the membrane, so why don't you start that process and I might ask you about a few other uh, applications. So we talked about metal here. We've also got uh, some other substrates that we can encounter. Can you talk us through what some of those are and, and the application with those? Yeah, so the single ply liquid flashing is going to come in handy for low thresholds and things like that that you might in, in come across on the roof once you've uh, you know increased your insulation or something like that. So. Uh, you're probably going to run into some blocks, some masonry walls, uh, probably some brick on some buildings, and then possibly the wood, you know, that has to do with, you know, low curbs or uh, door thresholds. And are there different primers for the different substrates? Yes. So we've got uh, a wood and metal primer that we'll be using here today. Uh, then there's the concrete and brick masonry primer that we have. Uh, the thermoplastics share a, uh, a primer, so that's going to be the TPO PVC primer, and then EPDM has its own uh, primer. Okay. Any special considerations uh, during the surface prep uh, phase uh, that they really need to keep in mind? Well, yeah, you want to make sure that everything is really, really clean uh, and no contamination. So now that I've abraded the membrane with my 60 grit sandpaper, uh, I'm going to go ahead and get some membrane cleaner out, get that surface clean as well as the, the metal clean. So. Um, like you would for a block wall or something like that. If you can't get it all the way to clean from just like scraping, then you're probably gonna to need to go ahead and get a cup grinder and grind that, uh, that block or brick down to like a, an uncontaminated surface before you get going. All right, uh, last question. Any environmental considerations uh, when using these, these products? Yeah, so um, storage for this is gonna be uh, 60 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit, Jim, and then Whenever it comes to the installation side of things, you really want to make sure that uh, you're staying within that 40 degrees to 90 degrees Fahrenheit parameter. Um, being that most of these are two components, you're going to have some exothermic reaction while they, they're curing out and the temperature is going to impact your pot life from that perspective. So cooler is going to have a little bit more, warmer like we are here today, probably going to shorten that pot life a little bit. Gotcha. All right, well, we will be back with step two, which is the installation of the metal primer. All right, we're back with step two of the installation of our single ply liquid flashing. As you just saw in the breakout clip, uh, the, we, we saw the mixing process associated with the, the metal primer. Jonas, uh, any kind of quick notes on that process and, and things they should keep in mind? I would just say be really thorough, Jim. You know, like the, uh, the, 
portions in the bag are, are proportioned already. So um, you pull that strip and then you're mixing from side to side. You know, make sure you work down into the corners and then just follow the two minute mix protocol. Okay, well, I know you're on the clock, so I'll let you get started installing the, the metal primer. A uh, couple of just quick questions um, about the primer. How, how much pot life do we typically have with this primer? It's gonna be about an eight to 13 minute pot life on this primer, it's, it's pretty quick. So you're probably gonna to wanna to go ahead and get, you know, if you've got more than one penetration to do, get those all prepared and ready to go so that you can you know, get them all primed up, all your metal surfaces uh, using the, the same pot here. Okay, and what is the cure time uh, for the, the metal primer? Metal primer, uh, again, it's gonna be like, dependent on the environmental temperatures, but you're gonna be somewhere between two and four hours. And then you're probably gonna to wanna to go ahead and get that covered up with resin in about 24. All right, so if they've got material left over, they can uh, come back um, and later to finish it. You can go use this um, primer on some other penetrations as long as we get back in a timely manner to, to cover them. Talk me through the, the application process here and, and how you're applying this. Any kind of special uh, things to keep in mind there? Well, it's a, it's, it's a pretty thin primer, so I'm really working from the bottom up. You know, I've got to fight gravity from that perspective. So I'm gonna start at the bottom and work my way up. That way, if it does start to run, it runs down into the, the main body instead of pooling uh, down at the bottom. Gotcha. Uh, I noticed that as you're, as you're coating this, um, you're not priming the area above the tape um, that we had you know, previously prepared. Um, what can they do with that area that isn't gonna be receiving the primer and the resin? Well, I think once we get done, Jim, you'll see there's going to be a really nice sharp line whenever we pull that uh, that tape off of up there. So once it gets all cured out, that'd probably be a good time for them to come in, retape the uh, the single ply liquid flashing, and then you could use a you know rust inhibiting primer or paint to go from that that line uh, upward to make sure that you don't have any uh, any rust that occurs on the, on the metal pipe or uh, angle iron after that. All right, sounds good. All right, well, that brings us to the end of step two. We will be back with step three, which is the installation of the membrane primer. All right, we are back for step three of the installation of our single ply liquid flashing material, which is the installation of the membrane primer. Uh, so I know with the metal primer, we had a special set of instructions for the mixing process. Any considerations along those lines for the membrane primer? Not really for this one, Jim. It's a single component, you know, solvent based primer. So a good practice would be give it a, a shake or a stir just to make sure it's nice and consistent, but no special protocol on that. Okay. Any special uh, preparation we need to do to the surface before we put the primer on? Well, we've already gone over the sanding and the cleaning from, from the other day, right? From yesterday. Uh, but this morning, when I went through and just made sure that there wasn't any dirt and debris that had gathered overnight. So I'd already cleaned those to make sure that it had plenty of time to flash off so we'd be ready for our, our primer. All right, well, why don't you go ahead and start uh, you know, putting on the primer. Uh, what's the, uh, is there any cure time associated with this product or, or anything we need to remember there? Well, as a single component, it's more like a, a flash off time. So that's gonna be you know, environmentally driven, uh, but it's gonna be really quick. So it's a, it's a very thin uh, primer. We're gonna get that on, brush it around, make sure it's really nice and even and consistent so that it all flashes off at the, the same time. But um, no, there's not really any, any kind of cure period per se. Okay, so I know we obviously did the metal primer first. Is that a best practice? Is that something we really need to do? I would advise it. The, um, the flash off or the cure time on that primer, you wanna make sure that that's all the way set up before you start doing any of the other stuff. So um, it's good to go ahead and get that one going. Uh, this, is, this is so fast and it's, it's flash off from the, the membrane primer side of things that uh, just from a productivity standpoint, you'd want to start with the metal primer. Okay, and I know yesterday when we prepared the surface, we did the, the sanding on this, even though we weren't going to prime it till today. Uh, is there a reason why we'd want to do that before any of the primers go on? Yeah, we wanted to do that to make sure that we had that abraded membrane uh, where the metal primer was going to overlap onto the membrane uh, for one. And then two, we just, we didn't want to create any more debris than we had to or abrade or, you know, damage that top surface of the, uh, the metal primer by abrading the membrane after the metal primer was done. Okay, and how long do we need to wait before we can come back and, and put on our, our resin and our screen? Um, it's going to depend on the environmental conditions, but it's going to be really quick. So I would say this is probably, you know, somewhere between 10 minutes and an hour, depending on the environment. All right, sounds good. We will be back with step four which is the dry fitting of the fleece for the installation. 
All right, we are back with step four of our single ply liquid flashing installation demo. And in this section, we're gonna be dry fitting the fleece that's gonna go on in step five. Now, Jonas, for the sake of time, you've, you've pre-cut uh, all these pieces. Why don't you uh, take us through kind of what you did when you were making all the, the, the dry fit fleece here. Yeah, absolutely, Jim. So we've got, uh, you know, remember we did the metal primer on our fastener plates here. So we were gonna to wanna to cover those up. So making sure that our reinforcement extends two inches in every direction from, from that onto the, the field membrane. So I've got those cut. Uh, then I've got the, the next layer that would go in is gonna be part of our base target. So you'll notice a couple of things about the base target. I've left somewhere between a quarter and a half inch of reveal all the way around the perimeter between that and the tape. So that makes sure that we encapsulate that edge really well. And then we've also turned up the uh, the angle iron here by a quarter of an inch uh, just to make sure that we create a nice collar that tucks up tight against our penetration that helps in that water shedding aspect of things. Okay, now you have kind of three different layers here that we're putting on. Is the order in which you install them important? I really like to do it in a, in a like from bottom up standpoint because it creates a water shedding effect going down. The liquid membrane really becomes monolithic whenever it's done. So it's not as important, but uh, but it's just good practice for some of the other stuff that we, we do in the roofing industry. And what does the, um, the fleece do in this system? What is its you know, purpose and why is it in included? You know, the, the resin is, uh, it's pretty elastomeric. It's two part urethane. So it's got some good stretch to it. So the scrim's really gonna give us some structure there. It's gonna help to, uh, to take some of the tensiles and the, the movement from the building that uh, this might see and keep it from uh, tearing our, our resin. Excellent. All right, well, we've got really good tight fitting uh, fleece here application. So we are now ready for step five, which is gonna be the installation of the base coat and the fleece. All right, we are back with step five of our single ply liquid flashing installation, which is installing the base coat and the fleece for the actual membrane. Um, as you saw in the, the breakout just prior to this, we went through the mixing operation for the resin itself. Do you want to say anything different about that mixing process than what we did with the primer earlier? No, not really, Jim. Just focus on getting the corners and everything being mixed nice and consistent. Okay, well, I know we're on the clock, so let's go ahead and get going here. Um, what is the pot life of this material? It should be about 25 to 30 minutes, depending on uh, the environmental conditions that you got going on. Gotcha. All right. So why don't you take us through some of the things, some of the, the, the particulars we want to keep in mind as we're putting in this base coat and the fleece. Well, we're trying to get to, you know, about 40 mils of resin below the reinforcement, and then we'll do another 20 or 30 over the top for a target thickness of somewhere between 90 and 110 mils, including that of the reinforcement. So right now I'm just trying to make sure that I get a, a nice heavy base coat everywhere that those target pieces are gonna to touch. So I wanna get some resin down and then start placing my target pieces. So, so this really leads to why it was so important that we did the dry fit of the fleece earlier. When you're on the clock, it'd be pretty challenging to, to get that stuff made at this point, wouldn't it? Yeah, with a 20 to 30 minute pot life, Jim, you don't wanna be uh, out there trying to, trying to cut some extra. All right. So now as, it, as we go through here, I see that you're, you're getting a good coating on top of each of the plates before you put the, the fleece on. Um, I know later we're gonna be doing you know, some of the vertical surfaces, any kind of best practices we should keep in mind um, around both the fleece and you know, as we're installing and trying to build thickness vertically. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty thin material, especially in the, the heat that we have right now. So it would never hurt to go ahead and get a, a kiss coat of the resin coming up you know, to start building some of that, that thickness that we're looking for. Um, but really, you just want to make sure that it's a really nice, consistent and even saturates all the way through and that anywhere that you've got um, reinforcement that there's resin underneath. Good. 
Yeah, it, it does seem like today, you know, it's, it's a pretty warm day here. Um, that is pretty thin and runny. Does that, you know, really affect the cure time that we have on this or how long it takes it to set up? Um, you know, temperature is going to impact a little bit on the, the cure period. But, um, you know, the thickness side of things, like I said, we're targeting that 90 to 110. And so if for some reason you're unable to get to that point, then it's probably going to be, you know, come back and put a second coat on uh, as, a, as a top secondary resin coat. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Well, you're getting pretty close to, to finishing up uh, kind of this base layer. Right, so you know, as we talked about earlier, you know, we're, we're really building from the bottom up. So you've got kind of this, this base piece is done over there. Um, anything in particular we want to keep in mind before we set on the next level of the fleece? Uh, we just want to make sure that anything, any fleece we put down, we get saturated. We want to make sure we have plenty of thickness of resin coming out all the way out to the tape areas so that we, uh, we get the good encapsulation as it comes through there as well. Excellent. You know, I notice a little bit, uh, you know, in these conditions, we're starting to see a little bit of run coming down the, the piece of angle iron. Any concerns with that? Uh, that stuff that we need to be smoothing out as we're going through the installation or stuff that uh, as long as that kind of taken care of before the end, we're OK? As long as we get it all taken care of before the end, we're going to be in good shape. Okay. It's uh, if you do notice it, you know, feel free to go ahead and hit it with the the roller and a little bit uh, of resin to pull that back up, you know, because we're kind of fighting gravity there. Sure. Right. Now I've got uh, where my second piece is going to go in. I'm going to have some overlap, so I got to make sure I get, you know, plenty of, of resin there. So then my next um, next piece of reinforcement is going to come in over the top as soon as I get all the resin down everywhere that it's going to go. So as, as we're doing this in, in and using resin, you know, I think we've got more resin here than we're potentially going to need for this specific application. Is it okay to go ahead and, and do multiple penetrations doing kind of this base coat, you know, while we've got the, the, the batch made? If, uh, yeah, if you kind of plan out how much you think you're going to be using and that makes uh, sense from like a, a phasing standpoint, you can definitely do that, Jim. You just want to make sure that uh, you don't leave any reinforcement of just like a base and a reinforcement layer left exposed overnight. So you'd want to get that covered up that day. Um, but that's... And, and why is that? Is it, is it a contamination thing, a cure thing, a bonding thing? What's kind of the method behind that? You, you really just don't want the, uh, the reinforcement to have any opportunity to absorb moisture into it. So, okay. so you really look into uh, to get that encapsulated all the way through before, you know, any, any possible weather might be able to come in. I know you talked about this when we were dry fitting the scrim where you created the little the little uh, roundup at the base of the penetration. Uh, remind us again, what, what is kind of the purpose of that? What is that helping us achieve in the, in the installation? Uh, it's just that that's the area where the resin could be a little bit discontinuous. So you want to make sure that you've got scrim overlapping scrim in all areas. And that's going to be one of the critical points where our horizontal is meeting our vertical surface there. That's it. When we're installing this with some of the other applications that we've talked about, whether it be a low threshold or any of the other types of irregular penetrations that you mentioned earlier, um, does much change in the way that we go about the process of, of installing this product? Not really, Jim. It, it comes down to as long as you get the, the overlaps in the scrim that you need and then you've got plenty of resin uh, below and above, then you should be in pretty good shape. So I know that I'm going to have some, some flanges from my vertical wrap that come down. So I need to make sure that I have plenty of resin down here on this piece of reinforcement that's already there. And so I should be able to start laying in my vertical pieces now. Oh yeah. So as you, as you start this vertical, is the, is the goal to really be able to see the, the, the resin itself start to bleed through the scrim here on this vertical? Is that how we know we're going to get a good bond? Yeah, you should be seeing the uh, the resin itself bleed through uh, the reinforcement. So in this inside corner, I know it's hard for you to see where you're at, but there's definitely going to be some overlap of reinforcement. So i got to get some resin in there to make sure that that overlap occurs with resin in between. So same thing happens over here on this side that you can see, Jim. We've got uh, our vertical, vertical wrap, the second piece here. 
So it's going to come through. It would be scrim on scrim. We don't want that. So we got to get some resin in our reinforcement here to make sure. It really does seem like we're starting to already get a little bit of adhesion or setup. You can kind of see where the places you're you're padding it together. It's really starting to bond to itself. Yeah, that fleece is really soaking it in right now. Uh, so we just want to make sure we get plenty in between those areas. Uh, and then we can, as long as we have some underneath and in between, then we can really touch up a lot of that stuff when we come through with our top coat. All right, looks like we have finished up step five, which was the installation of the base coat and the fleece. We'll be back with step six, which is the final top coat. All right, we are back with step six, our final step in the installation of our single ply liquid flashing. Uh, in the last step, we put down the base coat and the installation of the fleece. Jonas now is gonna take us through the steps uh, with the installation of the top coat. Um, he's obviously on the clock, so he's already getting going here. But Jonas is, we prepare to put on the top coat. Anything we need to verify or make sure of before we get started? You know, Jim, we just spent a little bit of time checking through all the pieces that we put down, making sure we didn't have any dry laps anywhere before we start covering stuff up. That's really gonna be the most important piece, just make sure that you've got, you know, a good amount of resin underneath all that scrim so that we can come back in with this top coat of resin and really seal things off. And I know you touched on this in the last section, but what's the total thickness of the, the system that we're installing? What's, the, what's What are we targeting? We're targeting somewhere between 90 and 110 mils. So we just want to make sure that we get plenty of resin uh, all the way through. So this section up here, sometimes just drizzle a little bit underneath to make sure that I get it in underneath the scrim, that reinforcement. Make sure that we got plenty going all the way through. See, there we go. Now, it, when this is finished, what's, how long do we have um, before this is really a watertight penetration in our roofing system? You know, it's pretty warm today, so it's setting up pretty quick. We've got quite a bit of, uh, of heat coming out of this system. So it's gonna be pretty quick, probably uh, two to four hours, and then it's gonna be in a watertight condition. Is the, is the installation of this any different, um, you know, in the base coat when we're doing a threshold or any of the other irregular penetrations, or is it pretty standard across the board? You know, it's, it's pretty standard. We just want to make sure that we've got, you know, good even coats of resin over the scrim and all that kind of stuff. So it doesn't really depend on uh, what the substrate type is, as long as you follow the recommendations from the primer side. Excellent. And we do have all of these steps pretty clearly laid out in our application guide. I know also recently you and I did a, uh, a podcast where we you know, went through some of the key factors of this. Um, any other resources that you're aware of out there that uh, our contractors can, can reference you know, about using this product? Well, I think we've got some published installation guides. You might have just mentioned that. Uh, but outside of that, I think those are probably going to be the, the primary areas they could always contact our local uh, field tech personnel. Um, you know, don't forget to use the JM Tech Expert app in order to make sure you find the, the tech, tech rep that's gonna be local to the area that you have the question. I noticed that you've been really trying to smooth out any of the bubbles or, or things that happen there. You know, is that really to make sure we have a, a true watertight seal or, or what would the impact be if we had an air gap or something like that in the system? Yeah, I mean, if you end up with a void, Jim, there's a chance that, uh, you know, like it could, you know, dry out over time, possibly crack a little bit and then would become not watertight anymore. So we're really focusing on making sure that we get the fleece fully saturated, tucked up nice and tight and all those, all those transitions, uh, no air bubbles, things like that. And this installation, when done correctly, um, this qualifies for, is it a 20 year uh, guarantee, you know, within our systems? Can be included in uh, up to 20 year guarantees in the JM single ply line, yes sir. All right, so Jonas is just kind of finishing up uh, with, with the resin piece. So any last steps we need to take here before we're done with the uh, installation? You know, Jim, the last thing we want to do is while the, the resin's still wet, we want to start pulling this tape so we can get to those nice, clean, square edges uh, that just really finish off the detail. So I'm just going to pull the tape all the way around the perimeter. Is this a challenging thing to do later on? Yeah, once that resin sets up, it gets pretty pretty stiff. So you don't want to have to be fighting 
uh, stiff resin while you've got uh, you know just masking tape that you're trying to trying to pull off of here. That's it. All right, yeah, that tape really is giving nice clean edges, and we can see where we've got the quarter to half inch, um, you know, extending beyond the edge of the reinforcement. So it really looks like a great installation here, Jonas. You've done, you've done really a, a fantastic job on this today. So thank you for that. Thank you, Jim. Just a couple more pieces to get. Well, Jonas is just putting the finishing touches on this. The details look great. I want to take a moment just to thank you for your time and your effort today. It's been great. We hope that you found this uh, demonstration to be both informative and educational. And uh, if you have any additional questions on the back side of this, don't hesitate to reach out to your JM contact. And we'd love to continue to support you when you run into these types of unique situations. Thank you for your support and have a great day.